You glance out the window, sighing with relief when you don't see anything. Until... The door handle... Oh no! Begins... To shake! Oh. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David. And today I want to play a game called Pune Pune Heart Throbbing Endless Love Bakery. This is not how I expected this game to start! I mean, I knew there was gonna be shenanigans, but shenanigans in second... second one? Hello? Mm. Oh no. We're closed. Mm. Why you gotta do this to me? We just started! Ah! No, no, no. Please, go away. I, I can still call someone. I... What you want? Why you gotta do that to me? I'll fight you! I am Espoir. It's French for being really, really unsettled. Hello, Espoir. Welcome to the bakery. Yay! Your bakery. Yay! It's not the most popular, but hey, maybe you'll make some new friends. Best of luck. Why do I feel like you've, you, narrator, has, have skipped town saying good luck, bye? Leaving me here with these shenanigans. Ooh, that cake looks nice. I can't own a bakery. I would eat everything in there. You walk into the bakery and shut the door behind you. There isn't even a single fingerprint on the glass. You look around to see yesterday's cleaning completely intact. Not a speck of dust. Or a hint of life. Mm -mm. You breeze through your daily morning routine of preparing the bakery. And after a quick 15 minutes, you turn on your neon sign and officially declare the place open. Though at first you decide to relax behind the counter, it isn't long before you are scouring the building, trying to see if there's any work you can do that isn't just waiting for customers. You slump down on your bar stool as you wait for your two regulars to show. Well, technically three, if you count the person that delivers your ingredients. As the minutes, an inevitable hour, drones on, you wonder to yourself how you got to this point. When you first opened your bakery, you saw a fairly decent number of customers. Nothing too special, but you could see the potential. That was until... Bonnie's Bakery. <gasps> you shake your head rapidly, trying to get rid of your nagging thoughts. Do, uh, do I gotta hire a guy to hire a guy to take a look at Bonnie's kneecaps for me? <laughs> Whatever. I should be focusing on my own bakery. Maybe I should ham up the advertising a little more. You pull up your phone and start scrolling through your business's social media page. You glance at your handle and immediately cringe. Let's see, what do we have here? I'm no CEO specialist, but... Pune Pune Bakery. New bakery open now. Come enjoy some delicious pastries. 25% off all orders for opening week. That seems pretty all right. Pune Pune Heart Throbbing Endless Love Bakery. Oh yeah, I didn't see that part. Yeah, that's a little cringy. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I personally would go to Pune Pune Heart Throbbing Endless Love Bakery over Bonnie's Bakery. At the time, you thought the flashy, garish name would at least draw in some curious onlookers, but alas, all it did was make it a pain to look up your bakery in the search engines. Oh yeah. You've been making frequent posts as well. Pictures of the freshly made desserts. Funny little bakery puns. Polls for people to vote on, etc. The posts haven't been getting any likes since last week, but you type up something anyway. Polls always get some engagement at least. Aww. What's everyone's favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, other. I don't like ice cream. You sigh as you click the send button before resting your head against the counter. You dread the thought of doing nothing but staring at your screen again today. Mm -mm. Suddenly, you hear a notification go off from your phone. <gasps> L plus ratio. <laughs> On my lunch break right now, what you doing? 
Not much. What's for lunch? Cup noodle. You should be eating something healthier. I think this is the 100th time you're eating instant ramen. Eaten. LMAO, no. They taste good and are easy to make. I can make you food to take to work. Is her thing almost like a little mouse chef? How's your day going, Lamau? Same as usual. Nothing interesting. Don't worry. Once I'm off work, I'll be running over to your bakery. Leia's here to save the day. Lol. Saving the day makes it sound like I'm in danger or something. Ha 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 ha. Hopefully I'm not. Boredom is super dangerous, man. You know how many people say that they're dying from boredom? <laughs> Lol. Oop. Five minutes left of lunch break. Gotta chug the noodles. Bye! <laughs> A smile forms around your lips, and you snicker to yourself. You can't wait for Leia's shift to end. You're not looking forward to hours of doing nothing again today, but Leia's message brightens your mood. On the other hand, her mood seems to have dampened a bit, quite literally. I spilled the soup on my pants. Oh, n no! <laughs> you and Leia exchange a rapid back and forth, and you're so engrossed in your conversation that you fail to hear the ring of the doorbell as another customer walks in. <gasps> but it isn't long before the customer makes himself known. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do that is not the sound that I was expecting. Good day to you, sir. How may I help you? Is this the kind of service I should expect from this establishment? It's no wonder you have no customers. Mm. Ron Gassetra, food critic. Oh no! You groan internally. Though he had been popping in here and there recently, you really didn't expect the customer to keep returning. Not even as infrequently as he currently was. You didn't really know if you could call him a customer, since he seemed to always have more complaints than orders. Ron, to what do I owe this pleasure? Do not you, do, do not you, not you, not you. That's really cute. Referring to the customer by their first name? I'm going to have to dock off another point for that. Did you want something? Or did you just come here to complain again? Not, not, not you, 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 you. Not do, 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 do. How rude. I'm merely offering my critiques. This benefits you more than it benefits me. Perhaps I won't be ordering anything at all. Maybe I should put up a no loitering sign. Not, not do, 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 not, not do. Amusing as always. Well, you know my order by now, don't you? Get to it. He sounded pretty confident about you knowing his order by now. So it must be one of his regular orders, right? You tried to rack your brain for any clues, but all you could remember are the countless complaints and grievances he had with, well, everything you did, honestly. You had a few guesses, but you weren't really sure. What was it again? Don't ask me, I just got here. Um... You like the chestnut moose, buddy? <laughs> this is absurd. How could you forget my order? It's so simple. All I want is one order of the lovey-dovey magical combo macarons. Is that too much to ask for? You recoil at the name of your macarons being said out loud, and that feeling brought back a memory from the first time he visited your bakery. At first, you were thrilled because someone was finally ordering something. The excitement quickly vanished once the scathing comments started rolling in. Hmm. I apologize, Mr. Gassetra. It appears I've forgotten. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah, not, yeah, do, do, not, do, not. Forgotten? How could you forget? I ordered the lovey-dovey magical combo macarons twice as much as I ordered everything else. If I recall correctly, you've only ordered everything else once. Do. Exactly. Oh. As if his attitude wasn't bad enough already, you're suddenly hit with the realization that you haven't needed to make macarons since opening day. You even cut down on the number of flavors you sell, since customers are sparse. You hope that he settles for ordering something else on the menu today. Hey, you want that chestnut mousse I offered? How foolish of you. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for then? What do you mean? 
Tell me how long the wait will be. I'll come back to get them. Normally, I ask for pre-orders at least three days in advance. No, no, do you, do you, do you. Three days? You must mistake me for a man with a lot of free time. I need to make two dozen macarons, so it'll take a while. Do you, do you. No. But certainly not three days. Unless... Do, do, no, 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 do, 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 ah, no. Yes, of course. You must be talking about all the other orders you have to prepare. Yes, they will take a long time to complete, won't they? Listen, you. You bite your lip to stop yourself from saying anything unnecessary. He's a customer. He's a customer. You breathe in deeply, then crack your face into a stiff smile. Your order will have the highest priority, Mr. Gassetra. I will make it for you as fast as I can. <sighs> Excellent. I will return tonight to pick up my order. Your fake smile erodes slightly. T tonight sir? Yes, I expect great things. Here, take my business card. Send me a message when my order is ready. Mm. Ron, the food connoisseur. You hold the business card in your shaky hands with disbelief. Listen, sir, I've got some choice words for you. Before you could even retort, he was out the door, smug as ever. You go straight into the kitchen and scream into a baking dish. <laughs> what was he thinking? He wanted you to make two dozen macarons in just a few hours? It was unreasonable, but you had no choice but to go through with the order. A sale was a sale, after all, and you needed the money. You walk over to the sink to clean the dish you just screamed into and remind yourself that violence is bad. At least you had something to do now while you waited for Leia. Besides, you have an employee. When you first moved here, you figured you would need some extra help running the bakery. Just one employee, nothing big. But paying someone to do nothing adds up pretty quickly. Finally, you'd be able to give him something useful to do. His shift would be starting soon, so the two of you would be able to handle this monstrous order together. Ah, that must be him. Ugh, let's read what he already posted before. Are you coming in today? Feeling a little unwell, but I'll keep you updated. Sorry, paycheck will be a little late. That's okay. Hello, Espoir. I'm afraid I won't be able to come in for work today. Aw, oh, man. Or tomorrow. Or any of the upcoming days. Ever. <gasps> what? What do you mean? I could really use the help today. Are you quitting? Where's the... Are you okay? Did something happen? Do I need to put someone out bag for you? Are... Are you quitting, person I've never met yet? I would really prefer to talk in person. I'm sorry. If you have time today, can you meet me at the cafe nearby? I really don't have the time to. I gotta... I gotta deal with a butt bag. A whole bag of butts. In the shape of a person. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I promise I have a good explanation. Please meet me at the cafe. All right. Only because I think you're cool. Of course he would pick today of all times. Let's see. The cafe, huh? If I remember correctly, it should be... Mm -hmm. Eh? It, it all? Oh, cool. Oh, neat. Cool. Hey, oh hey, it's your bakery. I'm sure it'll gain popularity eventually. Where's uh where's Bonnie's where's Bonnie's butt bowl? Where's where's my rival? Where are they? Ooh, arcade. Let's see, this is the cafe. The cafe is a local coffee shop. It's a nice place to wind down and relax in. Ooh, fancy. You walk into the cafe at a brisk pace and sit down at a table impatiently, waiting for your soon-to-be former employee to arrive. If you didn't have a good explanation for this, you would be sure to blacklist him from your bakery forever. Here's a flyer of our limited items during the festival. Be sure to visit us. The barista takes out a paper from the stack that he's holding and places it onto your table. Festival? The food festival. It happens every year. Are you new around here? I can't imagine anyone visiting Woodstown for anything but the festival. I haven't been here long, no. Well, 
You got here just in time to enjoy one of the only good things about this place. Aww. The barista saunters off with a hearty laugh. You take a moment to glance over the flyer. Hmm. Here's some coffee. Limited time Foos Fest drinks. Cute. Very cute. Is the festival cobbler a drink? Before you can ponder the menu any further, the cafe door is open, and you quickly find yourself in some very sheepish company. <laughs> cute. Wait, is that my employee? <gasps> He's adorable! Did somebody hurt you? Did somebody threaten you? Where are they? Thank you for meeting with me. Aww. D d employee. Your employee. D Aww. That's his name. A customer came in with a large order today, so make it no. quick. Oh, I'm sorry. If you're really sorry, then come help. No. I... I can't do that. Why not? Mm. He sits there, nervously, unable to look you in the eyes. His complexion is unusually pale today, and for a moment you're worried that you've unintentionally bullied the ill. <laughs> I... I'm getting out of here. What? It's... it's for personal reasons. Personal reasons? Like what? Uh, can these personal reasons be punched in the face and thrown into a burlap sack? <laughs> I can't say. It's very personal. This is what you wanted to meet me for? So you could tell me you couldn't tell me anything? <laughs> I thought... I thought I'd say goodbye in person. You gulp. Have you just bullied a sick and dying man? Did you really need that help that badly? Goodbye? <laughs> I'm moving. Your tense shoulders ease as you slump into your seat, releasing the breath you didn't know you were holding. Don't do that to me, dude. You gave me a heart attack. Mm -mm. Never mind. You're moving, you say. <laughs> yeah, to somewhere safer. Safer? You haven't been here for too long, so you don't know the town too well. Is the crime here really that bad? You sigh internally, chalking this up to another reason why you shouldn't have moved. You push the thought aside for now, since you have more pressing issues to worry about. Well, at the very least, you can help me with this order before you go, right? Mm -mm. I can't believe this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope the big order isn't too difficult. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no worries. It'll be easy. Because big orders are well known throughout the lands to be easy to prepare. Your now former employee lets out an almost too genuine sigh of relief. That was sarcasm, my dude. Oh, that's good, that's good. I almost thought I left you at a bad time. Get out of here. Got it. <sighs> And just like that, your first, last, and only employee was out the door, leaving you alone with two dozen macarons to mick by yourself. <sighs> ah, great. It seems like the size of the order isn't going to be your only issue. Since you haven't had many customers, you've been neglecting to restock your ingredients. In particular, you haven't found the need to purchase almond flour again. Normally, I would be disappointed in myself, but I think I'll blame Ron for this one. You could blame Ron all you want, and you really wanted to, but that wasn't going to get you any almond flour. You grumble for a bit, wondering what to do, before remembering that you still have a lifeline. All you had to do was make one quick text. I hope this isn't too last minute. Mm -mm. Hello, I realize this is sudden, but would I be able to express order a bag of almond flour? Of course. How soon do you need it? Sometime today. As soon as possible. Please. Oh, understood. I'll be right over. You sigh in relief and begin prepping the other ingredients. Even with an express order, it would still take a while before they would get here. That's what you thought anyway. 
but barely 30 minutes later, you hear the door swing open with a crash, followed by a very polite, oops. Espoir, I got your order. <laughs> Aww. Cute. Abby Brunet, for delivery truck driver. Aww, precious. Oh, thank you, Abby. You... Wow, you're out of breath. I... I got here as fast as I could. Sorry to make you rush like that. I... It's fine, actually. I'm sorry as well. Huh? You look down at her hands to see them clutching a very full-looking 611 bag. She sheepishly pulls out many small packets of raw almonds. They, um, they said that it would take a day for the shipment of almond flour to come in, but I heard you can make it, so... You look down at the bags of almonds, then back at her. It was... inconvenient, but it was still better than nothing. You've made almond flour before. It wasn't a huge deal. Hmm. Almond flour. Just a little time-consuming. You silently curse your former employee for bailing on you before making your way to the kitchen. Thanks again, Abby. I'll take it from here. You really came in clutch. I'm sorry again. It's fine, really. You've been a great help. It'll probably take a while to make almond flour by yourself, right? I can help. It's my fault for not bringing you the right thing. You have a feeling that she'd be kicking herself on the way back if you rejected her help now. And an extra hand in the kitchen would be useful. Well, making almond flour isn't too hard. If you weren't too busy right now, would you be able to lend me a hand? Of course! Great, let's get to it then. Aww. Abby grabs a handful of the almond bags and makes her way to the kitchen. You show her where the bowls and other utensils are, then go back to grab the rest of the almonds. As you're making your way back to the kitchen, you hear a loud bang, bang, banging. Whoa! You tighten your grip on the rest of the bags and run into the kitchen. Abby, is everything- <laughs> Oh. She's showing those almonds, what for? You see Abby absolutely thrashing one of the bags of almonds with a rolling pin. She looks up at you and stops. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just trying to think of a quieter way to do it. Oh, no. You're fine. You try to keep a straight face once you figure out that this is her attempt at making almond flour. If you laugh right now, she'll definitely know that she's doing it wrong. While you're trying to think of a good response, Abby looks back at the crushed almonds and prepares to give it another whack. Ah, I just realized that there's no one at the counter to greet customers. Could you go up front to keep watch? I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> of course! <laughs> she dashes off to the register with a clueless smile as you empty the crushed almonds bits into a bowl. They hadn't been prepped in the slightest, so you probably couldn't use them for flour. But she went through all the effort to help you with these, so you decide to incorporate them into the decorations later. For now, though, you had a bunch of macarons and some almond flour to make. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Gacetra. Your order is now ready for pickup. Please arrive at your earliest possible convenience. Sincerely, Espoir. You set your phone down and practically collapse onto your stool. He better come back for his order. Oh, Espoir, someone's here. It better be a redhead. What? Was he just waiting for my text or something? You walk out of the kitchen, expecting to see Ron's smug face enter from the door, but instead you see one of your only other regulars. Cool. For some reason, this guy looks like a Pokemon trainer. He looks haggard, but not any more so than usual. You always wonder if he's just gotten out of bed whenever he visits. Without greeting you or Abby, he scans the menu board behind you. After an awkward moment of silence, you hear him mumble something under his breath. Coffee. Cool. 
Abe Pardon, detective. Cool. Who is secretly a Pokemon trainer. Oh, right. One black coffee, coming up. You make your way to the coffee machine and glance back towards the tired detective. Apparently, he's been in charge of solving some pretty heavy cases. Hmm. Though it's unconventional, you appreciate the fact that he spends his free time coming to your bakery and giving you patronage instead of reading books or whatever he does for fun. He's a pretty easy customer and isn't usually one for conversation. You always find it a little awkward interacting with him, though. Here you are. You place the cup on top of his table with a clink. After you take a few steps back, he grasps the handle of the cup and brings it close to his lips. You watch him blow steam off of the brew, wondering whether you should try to strike up small talk. You decide not to, since he seemed preoccupied. Yeah, he looks... he looks very tired. He's very busy. Not only that, but what kind of conversation would you even start with this guy anyway? You look towards Abby for some sort of advice, but she's too focused on diligently watching for other customers. The clock ticks away slowly as Abe sips on his coffee. After what feels like ages of silence and sipping, Abe looks up at you. Did I just stand over this man and watch him drink coffee? Thank you. Huh? For the coffee. Oh, right. Was that him asking you to leave him alone? Were you staring too much? Should you have gone off to do something else? Rather than agonizing over these questions for any longer, you decide to push through and make some light conversation after all. You were sure Leah would be here any second now, and you wanted to make the time fly by as fast as you could. Would you like something to eat with that? Hmm. More silence. Was that the wrong thing to ask? Should you ask him about one of his cases instead? But that would get into some pretty heavy territory, and you weren't sure you felt like dealing with that. As you're about to turn away and retreat into the kitchen, Abe snaps out of his thoughts. No thank you. Understood. <laughs> Just as you go to enact your escape plan, you hear a familiar voice call out to you. Be you, you Espoir, what's up? You miss me? Leah. Leah Bodegeg? Bodegeg? Childhood best friend. Leah, so you were able to salvage the noodles. <laughs> uh, oh no. Rest in peace, cup of noodles. I'm so sorry. Hey, at least you're here now. I'll make you all the food you want. You want a big meal to make up for the lost lunch, right? No, no. Nah, you don't have to do all that. You sure? I can give you a little discount if money's what you're worried about. You, you, no, no, you, no, you. Hey, you're not doing so good on money yourself. I'm okay. I bought myself a sandwich after work. What? My pastries aren't good enough for you? What? You heard me. Not ordering anything is a crime here. Either get a pastry or get out. No, you Fine, I suppose. Leah looks over the cabin of pastries and points to the straw, berry cute shortcake. Aww. Beagle. Give me one of those then. Okay, I'll go get that for you. Let's see. The pastry cabinet is. Uh. Ooh. Uh, is it this one? I think those are strawberries. Oh, beep, beep. Oh, it's so good. Man, you never disappoint. You haven't even eaten it yet. Oh, 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 beep. I don't have to eat it to know that it's gonna taste great. It looks amazing. Gosh darn it. I want to find a quaint little bakery. You roll your eyes dramatically, but your annoyed front is hardly convincing with the goofy smile plastered on your face. And what are you doing behind the counter? This isn't your bakery, bud. Beep, beep. It's the best place to sit. Yeah, yeah, just eat your food already. While Leah is scarfing down the pastry, you notice Abby shifting off to the side. Oops, sorry, Abby. You two haven't met yet, right? This is Leah, one of my regulars. Oh. Your favorite regular. Yeah, sure. It's nice to meet you. I'm Abby. 
I deliver ingredients to Espoir. Oh, oh, be cool. I'm Leah, and I eat ingredients for Espoir. <laughs> Just the ingredients? The three of you chat idly as Abe continues to sip his coffee. You be, you, you be, be. So, Abby, was it? Give it to me straight. Is it easy working with Espoir? Eat a little bit. Oh, yes. She's quite pleasant. Oh, oh, be, you, you. Of course. You have good taste. But something's bothering me. Huh? You be, be, oh. I don't see you with a pastry. You loitering or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I was oh, just... Oh, oh, you. you heard Espoir earlier. Either get a pastry or get out. Oh, oh, I I'm sorry. I don't have... I didn't think... Don't scare her, Leah. It's okay, Abby. You don't need to buy anything. Abby breathes a sigh of relief, but it isn't long before you exhale loudly yourself. No, I understand. You don't like my baking. <laughs> you turn away dramatically and sniffle. Oh, be you, you, oh, be wow, Abby. I can't believe you just made a spa cry. On purpose. With malicious intent. Is a bit no, I didn't mean it like that. The both of you snicker as Abby begins fumbling around for the right words to say. You leave Abby alone. I also did not order a pastry. You beat, you beat. Oop, looks like you need to get out of here too, bud. Okay. If those are the rules. Abe makes his way towards the door, and Abby glances at him, wondering if she should follow suit. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, guys. We're just joking around. <laughs> Leia! What? You guys... Abby's expression quickly shifts. Hey, where you going? Sir? Sir, where are you going? Abby's expression quickly shifts from frazzled concern to an angry pout. She turns away from you and puffs out her cheeks. <laughs> The next time you order from me, I'm going to upcharge you by 50%. What? Hey, Leah was in on it too. Don't pin this all on me. Oh, be, you, be, be, oh, oh, you, oh. I don't know what you're talking about. I have never wronged Abby. Don't try to pull me down with you on the sinking ship. <laughs> you traitor. Oh boy. In the midst of banter, you hear the door open, and Ron waltzes in with his head held high. Your expression flattens. Abby clears her throat when she realizes that the mood has shifted, and Leah withholds whatever witty response she was going to say. I do. Here from my order. You're a bit late, Mr. Gassetta. We're going to be closing soon. But yes, here they are, after many hours of baking. As you watch Ron pace over to the counter, he looks down at his order and shakes his head. Do, do, do. Yeah. Very sloppy. Your presentation is abysmal. What? You're lucky I'm here. These macarons are all different sizes. No consistency. What were you doing for the last few hours? Perhaps I should have given you a full day after all. Sir, you better take these macarons or I will make you take these macarons. He grabs one of the macarons and takes a bite out of it. Hey, you haven't paid for that yet. What do you take me for? Of course I'm going to pay for it. He contemplates the flavors on his palate before turning to you again. At least there's some redeeming quality to this misshapen mess. The taste gets a pass. You silently curse Ron's existence as you ring him up at the register. If you thought you were fuming, though, it was nothing compared to the dirty look Leah was giving Ron. No, oh, no, I'm just gonna ignore the both of them and get my work done. Oh, be cool. Hey, 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 what's your attitude, buddy? I'm exercising my rights as a customer. I don't believe I've done anything improper. Though, I doubt you would understand what proper behavior is in the first place. We don't need customers like you in here. Oh, really? I figured you would be grateful to have any customers at all. Besides, this isn't your bakery, so I don't think you have any right to order me around. Mm hmm yeah, I wouldn't mess with Leia. There were there were weights and, and dumbbells in her profile picture. You don't even get a second chance to react before Leia leaps over the counter, her hand gripping Ron's collar tightly. Abby covers her mouth as she gasps, and Abe looks up from his coffee for the first time in a while. Uh-oh. 
Ron looks nervous, but continues to run his mouth anyway. This is why this place has no customers. You're all so uncouth. I'll un your couth if you keep talking. What does that even mean? As satisfying as it would be to watch this happen, you decide it's probably best if a fight doesn't break out in your bakery. All right, all right, take it easy, guys. Leia turns to look at you. You give her a reassuring pat on the shoulder, and she hesitantly sits back down. Just so you know, I'm only backing off because Espoir wanted me to. This is unbelievable. I'm never coming back here. Ron runs out the door as he speaks, clearly afraid of Leia, but still giving off an air of bravado that becomes less convincing the faster he runs. <laughs> You're grateful that, at the very least, he didn't forget to pay in his haste. However, you can't help but worry about whether he'll press charges against your bakery or not. Hey, I know he was annoying, but you really shouldn't threaten my customers like that. Oh, beak, 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 you, you were just going to let him step all over you. You're too nice. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Simple assault is considered a misdemeanor, and will lead to jail time if charges are pressed. You, oh, you... Seriously? Whose side are you on anyway? Hey. The law. The law. Abe is right, Leah. Just... just let me handle it next time, okay? You... All right. As much as I would have enjoyed to see that. After the commotion settles down, you begin chatting idly with Leia, Abby, and very rarely Abe, until closing time eventually rolls around. As Abby and Abe pay for their food, you notice Leia outside, staring at the bakery sign. You clean up and make your way over to her. Something wrong? You beak, beak. Hmm. I feel like something's a little... Off. You think so? You glance in the direction of the bakery and take a moment to think. Yeah, maybe it's... Hmm? That's something right there. Is that suspicious? What's this? It's a note. Looks like someone didn't throw this away properly. Should I show this to Leah? Sure. I found this. You... Garbage? No. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. It looks like it says something... Cow... White cat... Rat? Hey, what's wrong with cows? I'm not the one who wrote it. Hmm. The bakery window. I just cleaned it today, but maybe there's something wrong with it. Should I show this to Leah? Sure. Is the window off? Hmm. No. Oh. Come on, Espoir, it's your bakery. All right, let me look again. Hmm. Is it the sign? The logo of my bakery? Huh, I feel like something's weird about it. Really? Is, is it my sign? Is the bakery logo crooked? Beep, beep. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Is it? I thought it was cleverly tilted. You both stare up at the sign, tilting your heads in unison, before looking at each other and nodding. Yeah, that's definitely wrong. I think I have a ladder in the storage room. Be -go -go. Here, let me go get it. I'll be right back. I think it's fine. It's, it's cleverly tilted. It's aesthetically tilted. As Leah sprints back into the bakery, you take a moment to appreciate the cool breeze. The night air is pleasantly chilly, and though it's been a slightly hectic day, you wouldn't mind having more days like this. As you wait for Leah to return, you hear... Footsteps. They sound like they're heading towards you. Fast. With increasing dread, you remember your employee's comment about the safety of the town. No. No, it couldn't be. You try to shake off your paranoia. But just in case, you run back into the bakery, making sure to lock the door behind you. You glance out the window, sighing with relief when you don't see anything. Until... The door handle... Oh no! Begins... To shake! Oh... Hmm... Ah! I forgot this was a demo! 
this is so cute! I honestly forgot this was a demo. Oh! They have a Kickstarter. Well, it looks like there's still a lot to this game, but uh, if you would like to support their Kickstarter, I will put a link in the description to it. So incredibly cute and well made! All the characters are adorable! Even Ron! And the cute little Banjo-Kazooie voice bank noises they all make when they talk is precious! I don't really know which direction this game is going to go, so I'm eager to find out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, or interact in any way that's comfortable for you. And if you'd like to support the channel and see things I can't post here at the same time, I have two Patreons, patreon.com slash espoirduvide and patreon.com slash espoir18only. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope.